massive story in energy, and I highlight the word potentially, because, all right, here it is. The Financial Times kind of scooping the Department of Energy and reporting that American scientists at the Lawrence Livermore Lab in California have achieved a breakthrough in man-made fusion energy. That is, at its most basic level, because the last time I checked, I am not a nuclear physicist. That is creating power from other power, in this case, a laser. And that power output is greater than the amount of energy required to make it. They call that in the biz a net gain. It has never been achieved before. Maybe, again, on a basic level, a good way to look at fusion energy is that it's kind of a man-made sun. Now, if this breakthrough is real and replicable, and that's key, it would be a big deal. Man-made fusion has been called, Kelly, the holy grail of clean energy. It is carbon emissions free. It is effectively limitless. A former Department of Energy official texted me last night and said, because I was posting about it, this person saw the text and said, if this experiment does work, as is being reported, it would effectively end all current power sources when it comes to making electricity. Coal, natural gas, wind, solar, they're gone. Now, this is a reason to hope, but there is still a lot we don't know. The Department of Energy will hold a press conference on this event tomorrow at that lab in California. So, Kelly, we should learn more. The FT just happened to scoop the Department of Energy on this story. So I'm not going to poo-poo the government and you know the whole energy complex here, Brian, but there's a big difference between being able to create a teensy bit of energy out of a lot of energy and being able to create a lot of energy out of it. I mean, what is the scale here and what do they think is achievable in say the next five to 10 years? Because again, you don't wanna you know, create these massive installations or spend a ton of money and only be able to power a light bulb, for instance. That's true. And it's also about the cost. Kelly, is it commercially viable if they can replicate it? And it's a huge if because this has been the promise for 50 years. There's magazine covers going back in the 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s. Here comes fusion. It's going to save the world. And then it doesn't work out or it's simply not cost effective. That, there's all those things go into it. Here's the risk, though, Kelly. Fusion would change everything in 100 years. The world would look totally different. It'd be amazing. But what we don't want is for people out there that are gonna spend maybe like 50 billion on building windmills to be like, oh, you know what, fusion's coming. Let's right. scrap that investment. There's a, hu there's a huge alternate angle to this. No, that's a great point. And, and again, you know, I'll be very curious what they say. I suppose at some point, no matter how much money you spend, if you're able to generate enough energy that is unlimited, then you should theoretically be able to, uh, to reap much, a huge return on that investment anyway. Well, maybe we'll find out the details. Let's just cue tomorrow. Here Comes the Sun by the Beatles. <laughs> Here Comes the Sun by the Beatles, your exactly. theme song. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Brian Sullivan. That does it for the exchange.